I want to share with you my belief as to who Jesus Christ is and what the spirit of Antichrist is. Many appear to be confused when it comes to understanding these things. So let's look at some of what is written concerning these matters. First of all, as we all know, Jesus was prophesied of in the Old Testament. It is written, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So it was prophesied that Jesus, the Son, is the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. These things we cannot deny, for they are written. The Jews knew that when their Messiah came, he would be the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father made flesh. That is why they were so angered at Jesus, because he was being hailed as their Messiah. They were looking for someone to save them from the Romans. But he came to save their souls, and he pricked their wicked hearts. He spoke things to them that they didn't want to hear. They were happy in their religious state. He upset their apple cart. That is why they made the following charges against him. It is written that Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. The Jews knew when Jesus said, I and the Father are one, just exactly what he meant. It is written, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. The Jews also knew what Jesus meant when he said, Before Abraham was, I am. It is written, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet, which means able, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Now those words were spoken by Paul, a Jew amongst Jews, a man raised to be a zealous, religious, commandment-keeping Jew, and he knew who Jesus was. 
the fullness of God the Father and his Spirit dwelt in Christ for God is a spirit and that same spirit that dwelt in Christ is the Spirit of Christ the same Spirit that he promised us it is written I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you yet a little while and the world seeth me no more but ye see me because I live ye shall live also at that day ye shall know that I am in my father and ye in me and I in you now the Jews knew that the Son of God was to be God manifest in the flesh so when Jesus told them that he was the Son of God they knew who he was claiming to be and God had blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts that they might deny him I'd like to stop right here and touch for a minute upon what the spirit of Antichrist is it is those who do not believe that Jesus was God made manifest in the flesh raised from the dead with a glorified eternal flesh and bone body with the ability to eat and drink and be touched the likes of which his children will receive after their resurrection from the dead it is those who claim that Jesus is now only a spirit it is those who deny that he is the fullness of God eleven of the disciples were gathered together discussing Christ after his resurrection from the dead when he appeared amongst them it is written that Jesus said behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself handle me and see for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have and when he had thus spoken he showed them his hands and his feet and while they yet believed not for joy and wondered he said unto them have ye here any meat and they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of an honeycomb and he took it and did eat before them it is the same flesh and bone glorified Jesus who is soon to return he came once in the flesh and he shall come again in the flesh it is written who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ he is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son whosoever denieth the son the same hath not the father but he that acknowledgeth the son hath the father also the Jews knew from the very beginning that God promised to send the Messiah the Christ Emmanuel God with us take for example the statement of faith made by Job it is written for I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth and though after my skin worms destroy this body yet in my flesh shall I see God a lot can be gathered from what Job stated here one his Redeemer lives not is going to live and two he Job will be a part of the resurrection of the dead he in his flesh and bone body shall see his Redeemer God the Messiah the Christ it is written in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God who was the word Jesus was the word who was the word the word was God so in the beginning Jesus and God were one and the same now if we lean to our own understanding in these things confusion comes this is a godly mystery it is written and without controversy great is the mystery 
of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Because of our limited understanding, oftentimes men have supposed that we worship three gods, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, when there is but one God who manifests himself in his Son by his Holy Spirit. It is written, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. It is written, The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. It is written, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So it is clear that Jesus is the Creator God. It is written, and so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. It is written, speaking of Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. God took on the form of a man, because he can, because he's beyond our understanding, because he's beyond man's comprehension, because he's able to be all places at all times, because he's God.